Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Being an Enterprise Architect. In discussing with some friends and colleagues recently about what it takes to be a good enterprise architect, we had some fun moments, including mentioning the much referenced Vitruvius quote, you know the one, that the ideal architect is someone of letters, maths, medicine, law, etc., etc. Now, whether it's a fable or a truth, it certainly rings true for many in our position. In other words, an ideal EA needs to be a polymath or a jack of many trades, perhaps. But is it more important to be technically strong or a good storyteller? For example, there is, of course, no right answer. But it occurred to me, when I used to do triathlon, the biggest gains were to be made by training to improve those areas with the biggest impacts. More time and energy could be lost if you didn't learn how to transition effectively from one sport to another than could potentially be gained by improving your swim time, for example. And it was different for everyone. So to me, there's little point if you're a technical whiz spending all your time developing just that area, if your comms technique is the one that slows you down or vice versa. So exercise those muscles that are your weakest link. Welcome everybody to uh, this Toolkit Tuesday special edition. Uh, thank you for joining us today, wherever you are in the world. Uh, it's great to have you with us. And my thanks uh, also, uh, as ever, to Paul Homan, um, distinguished engineer at IBM, for his thoughts on enterprise architecture, his EA minutes. So uh, uh, we look forward to them and uh, absolutely right. Um, Paul, it's a balance, isn't it? And uh, practice the things, the, the, the muscles that need the most exercise. So uh, great to uh, start with that. Um, we've got uh, a, a very interesting topic today around the, the use of the Archimate standard um, in a uh, significant project in the Ministry of Agriculture in Kenya. But before we get to that, just a, a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, Please, if you have any questions for our speaker today, uh, please put them in the Q&A channel, which you can get to. If you don't see it already, you can get to by clicking on the three little dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the Q&A channel and please put questions in there and I'll do my best to get through those uh, uh, at the end of the presentation and before the end of the session. Um, that's the first thing. Use the chat channel, please, to communicate with uh, the other attendees, uh, we love hearing where you're joining us from. Uh, it's a very global audience and uh, we'd love to hear you. It started already, um, started with Simon in South Africa. So thank you for that, uh, kicking us off. So let's uh, let's hear where you're joining us from uh, in the chat channel, please. Um, so before I uh, introduce our speaker, I'm gonna give a, a shameless plug for uh, the next uh, event from the Open, Open Group, which is our, um, event that we're holding in New Delhi between July the 29th and 31st and uh, it's going to be a, a, a three days and uh, we'll be talking about the Togif and Archimate standard, Digital India, sustainability and the digital enterprise on day one, ecosystems architecture and AI, cybersecurity and AI, open industry standards, and our open professions program, which is our skills and experience based uh, certification programs here at the Open Group. And uh, also on day three, very importantly, we have the Open Group India Awards for Excellence and Innovation, as well as an enclave for the Association of Enterprise Architects. So there's a lot going on in New Delhi, if you're able to, uh, to join us there. You will also 
um, be able to attend at least some of it virtually. So do go to our website and look for the details of our July event, July 29th to the 31st. Be great to see uh, uh, any of you who are there. And if you if you turn up at the event and you're here today, um, uh, please come find me and tell me that uh, that you heard about it here. So we'd love to see you there. So without further ado, I mean, well, actually, as an introduction, the the topic of today's um, today's presentation was actually um, as a result of the uh, India Awards that we did um, previously. We've done them for several years now. And uh, the presenter today, Peter Moyer, who I'll introduce properly in a moment, um, he was a winner of an award uh, in, in the uh, category for this project. So he's going to tell us a little more about it. But uh, Peter's been a, a great supporter of the Open Group and its standards for many years. So uh, moving into that, Peter Moyer is an award-winning EA practitioner, 23 years experience in ICT. He spent the last 13 years specifically providing architecture advisory services for private and public sector entities in Africa and Asia. So uh, a warm welcome to Toolkit Tuesday and the open group for Peter Moyer. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Steve. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to take you through this uh, assignment that uh, we have employed uh, the open group standards uh, to provide some solution to our agriculture sector. Um, so as Steve said, we uh, we as PTI Consulting, which is the company I, 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 I run, uh, we are very keen on using open standard, open group standards. We have used TOGAF uh, standard for all our assignments. We've also, in conjunction with the TOGAF standards, we've also used the Archimate standard as well, uh, just to be able to visualize and, and, and present uh, some of the solutions or proposed solutions to our client. So for purposes of today, I'll narrow down to this particular uh, presentation, uh, which is basically an agriculture sector data gateway or ASDG. Uh, it had a different name at the beginning, and I'll mention about that a little day later at the end. Um, so allow me to jump in directly into the presentation. Um, so um, I'll tackle this presentation in, uh, in, in, in different segments. I will describe the problem, uh, then the solution ideas. Uh, so there were ideas from within the client themselves. And so we had to have a meeting of mind whether or not that was the right idea. And if so, then how do we develop it? Then how then do we design that? So the design options that were available based on that concept or idea. And then an agreement on the chosen design. Then the adoption strategy, how that was adopted moving forward and where the, the project is at at the moment. Um, so in terms of the concept, uh, so this is meant to be a tool to enable, uh, you know, provide information to the agriculture sector. Uh, historically, there has been a desire for Ministry of Agriculture to have visibility of the, of the, of the sector wide uh, landscape in terms of farming practices, in terms of farmers, in terms of the, the impact of the intervention they make, for example, of farm input and subsidy management. And generally the tools that have been there have been fragmented and probably not talking to each other or mistress of data here and there. So there was a need uh, to consolidate this and have a single uh, or some form of a way in which they can have this visibility from one single source of truth. Uh, so the concept of the ASDG was to ensure there is quality data with analytical capabilities to better uh, support government in making policy decisions and intervention thereof. Now, this concept was birthed out of the wider agriculture sector transformation strategy, which is a sector-wide business strategy over a 10-year period uh, that uh, has different interventions. And digitization is one key component, which is considered an enabler in, in the realization uh, of, of the objectives. So just historically looking at uh, the pain points or the journey of 
you know have data within the agriculture sector in Kenya uh, so we have uh, th there was a time when uh, access to information was pretty much analog so mostly pen and paper solutions so for example farmers if they needed information on farming practices uh, they would have to either tune in into a radio program or TV program or attend trade fairs. Uh, that still happens today, uh, but essentially that was the only form of uh, information then. And so these trade fairs were not very frequent. So it meant that somebody had to wait uh, for access to information, you know, over a period of time. So then there was a transition into some form of when, when, um, when the country embraced, uh, you know, telecommunications and mobile telephony, the, that was early in the year 2000. Uh, around the mid 2000 and 2010, uh, there was uh, an explosion of SMS uh, basic information services, and this, you know, uh, led to the rise of mobile banking and M-Pesa and the, 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 the ability for somebody to get some alert here and there. Uh, but basically, it, it was a very physical first approach that is mediated with a bit of mobility and so coming to where we are at now looking at the the, the the growth and transformation strategy there is a very conscious effort to be digital first uh to use to use data a very data driven kind of technology uh technology enabled uh sector for decision making and hence the need of uh, implementation of various uh, technology initiatives or digital initiatives uh, then to enable the sector be a bit more effective uh, in terms of reaching the customers and implementing the policies that government has uh, over that period. So looking at the sector strategy itself, uh, it has a couple of uh, pillars. Um, that screen is a bit minute. Let me try and uh, expound it. So there, there are three, there are three anchors there, which have different flagship projects. So if you notice uh, uh, the, the the mapping, we've used the uh, Archimed uh, standard to to translate uh, the objectives of the ASTG flagships and 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 map them. They are off. So you have uh, key outputs there like uh, small scale farmer incomes as one objective agricultural uh, output and value as another objective, and then household food resilience as another objective. So these are the overarching objectives that are then anchored on the three on the three anchors, each on those pillars. And then below that, you have different uh, flagship projects. So, uh, and then under those flagships, there are use cases. So within, uh, within, uh, within uh, flagship, uh, Within flagship, within flagship seven, there is a use case there, which which is about uh, knowledge and skills, research, innovation, and data, and sustainability, and crisis management. So uh, this is the pillar that talks about digitization and the uh, the aspect of agriculture sector data gateway, and so we use that that that, that flagship within that uh, ASDG then to be able to uh, come up with, with, with the design. So as mentioned earlier, the, the, uh, these are some of the pain points in the past and you know, some of them still uh, persist even now in the course of transition. So you have issues, there were issues of duplicate data sources. So you find different systems having either part or bits of information from uh, uh, about the sector. Uh, there were difficulty in terms of seamless uh, exchange of data so sometimes uh, you have files that are exchanged on, on email uh, to be able then to be uploaded to systems and provide some key insights. And of course, the accuracy thereof is doubtful. And also the, 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 in terms of validity by the time the data is required. Uh, then of course, the, the lack of traceability in terms of the impact uh, for some of the intervention that government has, uh, has, has had in the past. Uh, so when we did our assessment, or when we came in in the project to do this assessment, we adopted the TOGA uh, framework, uh, customized it a bit just to make it easier for our client to understand. Uh, so it had three parts, which was uh, there was a discover phase, uh, which then would would be would cover phase A, B, C, and D on ASIS aspect. 
And then uh, we had the design phase, which would cover phase B, C, and D on the 2B phase, on the 2B side. And then the deploy, uh, yeah, the, de the, the deploy then would cover the phase E and F and, and the others. Uh, that is developing a solution and, and the roadmap and the implementation. Uh, so in terms of discovery, these are some of the things that, that we found basically validating the pain points that are already being, that were being uh, voiced uh, by the by those whom we interviewed or the different stakeholders. Uh, so one of the key questions that we asked the people we interviewed uh, was how should a unified data platform or a data gateway look like? And the answer that we got, because we asked an open question and we just wanted to get a feel of whether we are on the same page or whether there's a, a, a common understanding of how that looks like. And the, the collated responses using one, one, one sentence was a one-stop shop for all agricultural information that consolidated uh, fragment, uh, fragmented data sources. And so out of that, we developed a vision statement. Uh, so we said this should be an established and managed data-driven sector that optimally employs its digital resources. Uh, because it, there were already uh, some tools and, and capabilities that have already been implemented to deliver transformative experiences to the stakeholders in a coherent and, and holistic manner. And, 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 and for us, that was key. Uh, so out of that statement, uh, then we, we designed a, a high level view of how that one-stop uh, shop would look like. So this is a statement from uh, the, the Minister of Agriculture, the current Minister of Agriculture, and basically being on the forefront of saying the need for data and digital innovation within the sector. So this was a project that from the very top, including the president himself, uh, that they were keen on ensuring that, you know, di di uh, agriculture is digitized as much as possible. And so in terms of the design, the overall vision, uh, we had this uh, vision diagram. So this was like a fast cut or a, a high level sketch before we went into the, into the Archimate tool. So all these finally were transferred into the Archimate tool and I'll show a bit of that in, in some of the slides. So we considered three parts uh, of looking at the ecosystem. Uh, so we had, we have the, the, the I'll start from the bottom coming up. Uh, so we have the upstream side, which is where data is coming from. So all these sources that uh, there is mistrust or people are not able to get data in real time. So we needed to understand those. So what happened is we cluster them under topics. So for example, we have clusters of actor management systems and actors in this case would be, for example, farmers. You have seed breeders, you have importers you have transporters and all those. So these different groups of actors have been or are currently being managed by a system or several systems. And so we needed to understand what source of data resides in those systems and, 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 and what do we need to do about it to bring it into the data platform. Then uh, input management systems, you know, for farm inputs like uh, fertilizer, seeds, as well as you know the the, the mechanization aspect, uh, resource management systems in terms of weather data, in terms of climatic conditions, the ecological you know landscape analysis and all that. Then the production management systems. Uh, we had the agro processing management systems as well. Then we have uh, the, the the storage management systems, and these are quite many. Uh, so we have what we call the National Cereals and Produce Board, which is the key, uh, like, you know, that manages, you know, storage for agricultural produce. Then there are marketing management systems, the financing management and uh, knowledge management systems. So by clustering these, then we were able to go in and be able to do this identification and align those systems well and find where there are overlaps and where there are gaps. Then coming to the midstream, this is now the point where uh, at the ASIS then, uh, how data was being uh, managed in terms of the arrangement, how often is it required, how often is it provided, in what form is it, is it provided, who provides it, are there gaps, is it complete? And then from there then we, 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 we envisioned uh, 
the mid stream to be a place where then we can create patterns out of clustering these systems, then translate uh, translate the, the the transactional or the, the the pieces of data registries that are required for the data platform in 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 uh, in certain subjects. So, for example, within the actor management, you have the pharma data there. You have the pharma registry. So that becomes one component there as data and so forth. So for the other ones, uh, storage management, then you have a, a registry there about storage and everything. So th that was the midstream design. And then on the downstream side, which is where data is consumed, this is where now we plugged in the use cases of that flagship because uh, the ASTGS, the strategy, had envisioned certain use cases out of this exercise. So those use cases would be data informed, but the data had to be organized in this form before you get to the use case. So for example, for you to have a, an actual pharma registry, you have to fix you know, the, the, the sources of data and then organize the data in some form of coherent way. And the same case with the e-extension services and all the others. Uh, so this is how we looked at it. And then on the left-hand side, we were keen on having governance who manages this. There were stakeholders involved. And, 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 and we needed to identify who is in charge of what and what kind of decisions are made uh, in that ecosystem. Moving forward, uh, so we had to make some design decisions having presented that as a high level view. And uh, the options were A, either to replace what the ministry was already you know, using, uh, basically take out everything and as, you know, make a decision that whatever is there doesn't work, let's you know, start from scratch. And obviously that had implications and uh, the, 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 the stakeholders were not willing to go that direction. Uh, then option two was basically to make some you know, tweaks and fixes here and there for whatever was available. Uh, make some improvements, uh, you know, find quick wins, and then move on. Uh, also, that did not make uh, strategic sense, and so it was an option that was not preferable. And then there was this last option here, which was basically to re-architect, and basically it was uh, what I've alluded to there, uh, you know, uh, abstract the capabilities in those particular topical subjects, and then build a platform around that, so from the bottom up. And, 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 and this was, was, seemed to be a suitable uh, approach because it wasn't disruptive. Everything that was running continued to run. And even as it was running, then we had this transitional plan, then how do we move from the, the, how we are doing data uh, reporting at the moment to the new way of, of doing things. So that was the option that, 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 that informed the, 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 the design going forward. Now, uh, so we, like I mentioned, we, uh, we adopted the TOGAF uh, standard. Uh, so these are some of the principles that uh, we, for specifically for this, this platform. And so at the very top there, we have three like overarching principles, which are very business driven. So ensuring that the, the, the solution provided a frictionless experience, uh, it would seamlessly, you know, share data. And then it had this tr trust, it, it, it engendered trust in the sense that where the data is, it's trusted, it's secure. And then, uh, you know, you don't have multiple copies of that data everywhere. And so below that, then we have, we map to those to the, to the, to the domain level of principles uh, which are linked to TOGA. So I, I want to make a note here that these are actually uh, principles that have already been adopted by the wider government enterprise architecture, which is within the Ministry of ICT. So they did adopt some uh, principles. So we said we will reuse that and link them specifically for the agriculture sector. So in terms of how then the platform looks like in terms of components, so we had, uh, we have five, yeah, we have four components here or five. So there is the experience layer, and basically this is where the use cases are. So in this experience layer is basically, you know, the end, the, the end side of, of, of interaction with the platform. Our user comes in and we are using concepts of tenant. So, you know, somebody can uh, be able to come in. Uh, then they, they, have, they have an interface. There are services that they initiate. 
uh, so it could be a request for day for for it's a, it's a, it could be a request for data that is not directly on the platform uh, so maybe a specific request for a category of data and that would then be will go through a workflow process and then it's provisioned and so forth then there are some data that are publicly available and probably frequently accessed so we're looking at concept of a cache there so in the sense that then you have a way in which that this data is not directly read uh, from from the registries but there is a way in which it you know it it can quickly be presented uh, then there is the orchestration layer down there uh, so the orchestration is where we propose a workflow system uh, that manages the, the processes uh, the data and then the event. So in terms of uh, in terms of requests that come in, we consider them as events. So there would be an event for a data request, an event uh, maybe uh, for someone actually requesting to be created as, as, as a user in the system and so forth. Uh, then further down there, we have the persistence layer. And this is where uh, we uh, were uh, proposing to have um, the data from the transactional system organizing those topical uh, subjects that I talked about, the actor management, production, and so forth. And then on the uh, physical infrastructure side, so we had uh, options here. Uh, within the Ministry of Agriculture, there is an agency that uh, is involved in agricultural research, and they have been uh, funded uh, through development partners to build a, I mean, a, a form of a data center. So there was, we assessed that as one option in where to host this. Or another option was also to look at uh, the government uh, cloud, which already, I mean, is outside of that, but within the Ministry of ICT. So the understanding was uh, uh, that uh, we could have one as a primary site and the other one as a secondary site. So the government cloud was a cloud-based approach. So the, the, the objective was in the initial was to deploy the, the minimum viable product with the farmer registry onto the primary, the primary site, which is within the Ministry of Agriculture, but then with a plan to transition to the cloud, uh, uh, to the cloud, the government cloud, the government private cloud as the primary later on. So like a swap. Uh, so government private cloud at the beginning would be like uh, 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 would be like a secondary site, and then later on, then we would swap and it would be the other way around. So that was that was what that that was what was proposed. So these are just um, some mockups in terms of how the platform would look like. Somebody would log in uh, when they log in. This is what they would see uh some indicators at the top there that are publicly available macroeconomic socioeconomic indicators which come from the wider government within the planning the ministry of planning then we have agriculture specific uh you know indicators and and and, and natural resources like weather patterns and so forth and then below there then you have the actual data set in terms of how you browse that through uh, you can drill down uh, from whatever registry you want to look at. If it is ACTA, which ACTA, farmer, small scale, pastoralist, whatever it is. And then as you navigate through that, then it gives you some visualization over there. Um, so this was the, 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 the thought design and in, in, by and large, it has been adopted with a few tweaks in there um, as, uh, uh, as, as, as indicated in the link. So this is, uh, these are the partners that we worked with or we, we assessed their, their solutions. So we had IBM Cloudera community, they presented their solution and uh, we, 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 we considered them, but the, the viable option at the time, because it was a minimum viable, we wanted to do a proof of concept. So we opted for a build option and that was what adopted. And, and so this has been going on. We had to make some trade-offs uh, in terms of uh, some of the things which would be within the, the, data, the data platform itself. So for example, visualization uh, and the others were actually hived off 
and the data platform was uh, primarily considered to be more of the persistence and orchestration, and then it can be able to service the other upstream systems with the, with, with data for their specific reporting capabilities, uh, so that we avoided the overlaps of different functions. Yeah, uh, so these are just the features of the actual data, the, 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 data, the data gateway. Uh, and these are some of the partners who have shown interest and, and, pro and committed resources to be able to fund uh, the implementation of this together with other initiatives in the sector. I think I'm going to stop there uh, and invite questions. Back to you. Peter, thank you very much uh, for running through that. And I know you've got um, obviously other other charts with uh, that show you know indications of the models, which unfortunately we don't have time for yet uh, uh, today. Um, but maybe there's a way we can we can get those uh, added to what we make available. Um, but thank you very much for talking about this. We are um, close to time, so but I do want to take a couple of questions. Um, Navigating through a government implementation in particular can be can be very uh, interesting and political from a, uh, you know, a different interests point of view. Did you were you able to just work with the Ministry of Agriculture or were there other key stakeholders involved in the project? Yeah, so uh, primarily this was Ministry of Agriculture driven, but. Uh, as you as you've seen in the AS, the the strategy document, the government actually was depending heavily on the private sector to drive growth. So we did have to engage with the private sector because there are seed breeders there, there are actors there that had an interest in this, and of course the development partners as well. So it was it was a wider consultative uh, engagement. Right. Okay. And uh, I'll take the, uh, the the second question. Um, obviously, along the way, there were some design decisions to take. Um, how did the use of the open standards help you uh, go through those des design decisions? So one big one, and I think I've kind of alluded to it in the in maybe the second last or one of those last mm -hmm. slides. Um, so the issue of visualization, the issue of, so when we started discussing about the agriculture, so there was this, the, 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 the stakeholders would get excited by the terminology. So for example, single source of truth, right. it would elicit some reaction because somebody would think, okay, that should be my domain. Some of the systems that have been adopted or under implementation are actually called integrated agriculture management information system. So in a way, the terminology kind of lends itself to that system being like a self-contained and providing some of the things that the ASDG would uh, would provide. So we did have to then lay them out like this using the the using the Archimate tool, uh, providing topical you know classification of the function of the system rather than the name of the system. So looking at so for example, what does this system do? And then having understood the capability, then we separate it and say, okay, this one fits here. This one fits right. here. Right. Are we in agreement? And then, then we'll move like that. Yeah. yeah that's great. Great. Yeah. Peter, we're, we are over time, so I'm going to leave it there. But uh, once again, um, thank you, Peter Moyer, for a great presentation. There's a lot of interest in uh, in getting the slides. So maybe we can uh, make those available as well as the, uh, as the presentation somehow. Um, so uh, thank you, you've uh, intrigued and, uh, and kept our audience interested. So thank you very much, Peter Moyer. So, thank you. Um, just before we wrap up, folks, again, thank you for joining us um, today. Uh, we're actually on a bit of a roll at the moment. We're having another special edition Toolkit Tuesday next month, July the 9th, uh, when our topic will be leveraging the TOGAF standard for effective cloud adoption and enterprise architecture integration. So I know um, how how to use uh, the TOGAF standard and how to use EA generally um, for cloud adoption is a topic that comes up quite a lot at our events. So uh, it'll be interesting to see that. So that's uh, July the 9th, uh, same time. Uh, hope to see you then. Meanwhile, thank you for joining us today uh, and stay safe wherever you are in the world.
Thank you. Bye-bye.